So let's talk about this insane global market meltdown and what effects it could have on the development of Starship and on SpaceX in general. And then Elon made some highly fascinating remarks at the Satellite 2020 conference in Washington DC on the 9th of March, which we of course would like to analyze. Then let's talk about our future Mars colony and why another important piece will be Kimball Musk's hydroponic farms. Last but not least, we also take a quick look over to Blue Origin and Artemis because we of course don't want to only focus on SpaceX and the masks. So stay tuned for these highly interesting developments. Wow, so everyone that does a bit of trading and or investing probably had quite some brutal days last week. Stocks down 10% on one day, even gold was down and don't even mention Bitcoin. So what are the implications of this global market meltdown on the future of SpaceX? We of course will also analyze the implications on Tesla in our Wednesday disruption report. Now the effects on Tesla and SpaceX will of course strongly depend on how this global situation will unfold. Quite a few virologists suggest that it will be indeed quite a while, possibly one year or more, until this crisis can be resolved. And the historic brutal market sell-off among all asset classes is an indication that we could enter a two-year bear market. So in other words, enter the dreaded recession territory. Now of course a global recession will also have strong implications on space exploration. Let's be realistic here. We don't like to say it, we actually absolutely hate to say it. And the timing for this whole thing couldn't be worse, but it might delay Starship efforts long term by one, maybe even two years. Why? Well, because this will affect the whole supply chain, even if say, all workers at Boca Chica would wear antiviral protection gear. And even should every worker that gets infected with the virus be instantly replaced by a new one, which we by the way of course don't want to see. Even then, SpaceX is depending on a functioning global supply chain. They won't be producing all parts of Starship on their own. The steel for Starship is for example supplied by manufacturers who themselves might be affected by a virus spread and might have to shut down their production facilities for a few months. These manufacturers themselves might be dependent on other supply chains so that even should they remain open, they might not get enough raw materials themselves to produce the steel. And the iron ore mines themselves might also be affected. In this interconnected global economy, if one link in the chain breaks down, the whole chain would be affected. So yeah, there's definitely a real possibility that this global health crisis will delay Starship production. We hope not, of course. We really hope that Elon again has some genius ideas to prevent such a scenario. But realistically, this might delay the Starship timeline by one year. Worst case, even two years. This is our gut feeling. We cannot prove it. And we really hope that it won't come to this. The worst that could happen is that we will see Yuzaku Metzawa's Dear Moon mission in 2024 or 2025. The first uncrewed cargo starships to Mars in 2024 or 2026. Then a crewed starship landing on the moon in 2025 or 2026. And the first crewed landing on Mars by 2030 or 2032. This is still a thousand times better than what NASA could have ever achieved, even without the current global pandemic situation. And isn't there the saying that every crisis is also an opportunity? Maybe this will force SpaceX to improve their production lines at Boca Chica even more, to increase their efficiency even more, and to come up with new ideas to keep the Starship timeline. We shall see. But long term, we always remain optimistic for Starship, for SpaceX, for humanity. Always. Now on the 9th of March, Elon made some highly noteworthy remarks at the Satellite 2020 conference in Washington DC, link in the description. Remember that Gwyn Shotwell said only a few weeks ago that we might see a Starlink IPO as a separate entity from SpaceX, 
meaning that we would be able to buy Starlink shares. But when asked about this, Elon said something entirely different, namely that the main goal of Starlink would be not to go bankrupt. So we guess we might have to wait a bit longer until we see a Starlink IPO, maybe until Starlink goes online and really shows that it can consistently generate a profit. So no IPO after all we guess anytime soon, bummer. And even more so of course because of the global market situation right now. And then he also said something about using a different kind of steel for Starship. We remember that SpaceX currently uses 301 stainless steel. This is a type of stainless steel which shows a pretty good yield strength at a wide temperature range and has excellent structural properties at cryogenic temperatures which is of course extremely important since the Starship fuel is liquefied oxygen and liquefied methane at cryogenic temperatures. He didn't specify though what new kind of steel they would be using. Interesting, let's see what will come out of this. Now if we were to guess we would say vibranium. We all know that Elon Musk is actually Tony Stark, right? So probably Elon's old buddy Captain America told Elon where to get cheap vibranium from because only Cap knows the secret vibranium mine location and as we know Elon he already constructed a secret underground boring tunnel directly to the vibranium mine which just so happens to be only 100 miles away from Boca Chica. Wow, that would be an amazing plot for Avengers 47. On a more serious note, Elon then went on saying something we found quite astounding. We were really astonished when we heard this. He actually said that he thinks the pace of innovation at SpaceX is not fast enough because it took SpaceX 18 years to get where they are now. And Starship still isn't flying, which has been SpaceX's goal all the time. Ok Elon, so wait, being able to get from an office with only a few people and a mariachi band to landing rockets on drone ships 14 years later and building the most powerful heavy lift rocket which has already flown a few times and sending a red roaster to the asteroid belt in early 2018 and now building assembly lines which will pump out hundreds of starships which will colonize Mars. Oh wow! Now we see why SpaceX is so incredible. It would have taken Boeing 10 times more money and 3 times longer to achieve just half of what SpaceX has achieved in that time. So hearing that Elon is still not satisfied is just absolutely insane. But ok, that's Elon. He always pushes the boundaries and is never satisfied. That's probably the main reason why all his companies are so successful. He said that SpaceX really must increase their pace of innovation if they want to achieve bases on the moon and on Mars in his lifetime. Now we personally think, and this is just our opinion, that Elon might have had a few rough days. I mean, just look at his hairstyle. The guy probably slept somewhere on the floor in a production tent at Boca Chica or something. So maybe he was in a bad mood for saying that he is really afraid that he won't live long enough to actually see the Mars colony come to fruition in his lifetime. Elon, why so negative today? Elon is 48 years old and even with his insane lifestyle which, let's be honest, is probably not really healthy, he should certainly have at least, worst case, 30 more years, but probably a lot more. So thinking that there is the real chance that we won't have bases on Mars by 2050 is really really pessimistic. We think that this is just his worst fear, but in our opinion it is really an unfounded one. Even if this crisis will unfold into a two year recession, we don't see any future timeline where humans won't land on Mars in the 2030s at the latest with Starship. We see no timeline where we won't have a base on the moon by the year 2030. We see no timeline where we won't have huge bases or cities on the moon and Mars by 2050. So we think that Elon just had a rough couple of days and maybe the glasses half empty side got the better of him during that interview. But overall should SpaceX just continue with their current pace of innovation? We are really optimistic for crude starship landings on the moon in the 2020s and on Mars in the 2030s. We still remain very optimistic about this. But if Elon is really afraid of not living long enough, he should really think of living a bit healthier, you know. Maybe sleep a bit longer, eat healthy or even do an interval fasting diet. 
a bit of working out from time to time and take some anti-aging supplements, for example NMN or NR to boost NAD plus levels. He should certainly also look into recent advancements in life extension technologies, which will become a huge thing in the next 10 to 20 years. Elon could listen to some talks from Aubrey de Grey and David Sinclair. They say that's really only a matter of time until humanity will be able to push lifespan well beyond 100 years. Elon should really also look into these topics, but we guess he's just too busy. We really hope that he will live 100 plus years, because he's the most important person right now on this planet. We often like to compare him with Atlas, carrying the whole weight of the world on his shoulders. And nothing, really nothing must ever happen to him. This guy has to live a very long time, because he is driving all this progress. It's his insane spirit and drive that initiated this whole technological progress with Tesla and SpaceX. And we hope that he will live long and prosper, as Spock would have said. The original Spock, of course. So as we said, we remain very optimistic about the future, even with Elon having been in a pessimistic mood on that day, and even with the global current financial market situation going on. We will see a base on the moon in the 2020s, and we will see a base on Mars in the 2030s. And we often talked about how such a base would have to look. We often said that we must build underground bases in order to protect us from dangerous cosmic radiation. Or at least build very thick Mars regolith domes over inflatable habitats. We also need either rotating habitats to mimic Earth gravity, or genetic engineering to prevent bone and muscle loss and cardiovascular disease. And what we will also need, which we didn't talk yet about, are of course hydroponic farms. We will need to grow food on Mars, of course, because if we really want to achieve a self-sustaining colony on the Red Planet, the colony must be able to produce its own food. And this is where Elon's cool cowboy brother Kimball Musk comes in. Yes, Elon actually has a brother that looks like a cowboy. And in good old Musk fashion, he of course is also an entrepreneur. Kimball and Elon actually started their first company together in 1995. Kimball now is really pursuing his sustainable food idea and is for example involved in some startups which have the goal to grow food locally. For example, this company here that wants to produce locally grown food in containers not far from where people would actually buy and consume it, such as seen here in Brooklyn in New York City. And of course we know that nothing a mask does is by accident. We are pretty sure that this is planned with future Mars colonies already in mind. The food growing techniques, which are now being perfected here on Earth, will also be used on Mars. And we assume that Kimball Musk's companies will play a big role on Mars in the future, providing the know-how to locally grow plants. There will be large hydroponic farms on our future Mars bases, and by the way, also on our future Moon bases. Hydroponic means that the plant won't get natural sunlight, and also won't need soil as we normally know it. Instead, artificial lighting will emulate the spectrum of sunlight, and nutrients will be dissolved in a stream of water. The plants, thus directly getting the nutrients and water they need from the constantly recirculated water stream. So yeah, not only Tesla will play a big role on Mars with the Cybertruck, the solar cells, and the battery storage. Not only will the boring company dig underground bases on the Moon and on Mars, not only will we be able to have holodecks on the Moon and on Mars with a direct feed of optical information into our brain with the help of Neuralink, not only will we have an interplanetary network with a future Starlink 2.0, but no, we will also have Kimball Musk's hydroponic farms as another essential piece of the puzzle to enable us to live on other worlds. We hope that Kimball will still wear his cool cowboy hat on Mars though. And lastly, NASA and Blue Origin are also doing stuff. 
There is a really surprising development regarding Artemis that just reached us while already editing the video. The news is that apparently Douglas Lovera, chief of human spaceflight at NASA, wants to achieve the 2024 moon landing without the lunar gateway. Repeat, without it. Link to the source in the description. We often criticized the cumbersome approach to landing on the moon with the gateway as it would just be an additional component, making the moon landing more complicated than it would need to be. This means that Starship, which of course doesn't require the lunar gateway, and which was always our favorite method of landing on the moon, could now really become a viable approach for NASA. Before that, NASA would have had to rely on a moon lander, which would have been docked to the lunar gateway. But now, freed from the shackles of the gateway, NASA could, with this approach, be much more open to using Starship for the moon landing in 2024, or let's just say mid-decade because of possible delays due to the current crisis. This is really excellent news as it really opens up Starship as a way for NASA to conduct the crewed moon landings. NASA would then just charter one or more starships from SpaceX to do a direct moon landing without docking to the Gateway. Lovero said that NASA still wants to stick to the Gateway idea after 2024, but we sincerely believe that this was just the first nail in the coffin for the Gateway. As soon as Starship will land astronauts and huge cargo on the moon, the gateway will become completely obsolete as NASA and SpaceX can then directly start building a moon base. Let's hope that it will indeed happen like this. And Blue Origin shows us their BE-3U engines, which will power the second stage of the new Glenn rocket. And also their shiny blue control room, which certainly looks quite high-tech and extremely clean. We really can't wait to see more of the actual rocket, you know, this rocket here, which still only exists as a computer animation after all this time. It's nice that Blue Origin has started to show us more, but it's still a bit too little for our taste. We remain skeptical if the new Glenn will fly by 2021. And the current global health crisis will certainly also have an impact on Blue Origin. So let's see what that would mean for the new Glenn rocket. We predict that we will see the new Glenn fly by around 2023. But of course, we would be happy to be surprised that it will fly before that. Because the more rockets that fly into space, the better. So do you agree with us that the current global market meltdown will unfortunately also delay the development of Starship? We hope not, we really hope not. And what about Kimball Musk's hydroponic farms? Do you agree with us that it's not by chance that Kimball is pursuing something which would perfectly fit into the future Moon and Mars colonies? We are looking forward to your thoughts in the comment section. So you just watched the JS Space Report on every Monday where we talk about the most recent developments in spaceflight and space exploration with a strong emphasis on space politics. So thanks for turning on the show and I'd say on to the future!